the nervous system. So some of this is a slot, are some slides, and then we'll do kind of just like a discussion activity to explain one part of it. And this is one of my favorite ones, I think. This one in digestion. I think it's really interesting how it works, but some people have a harder time with this one, but hopefully how we present it will make sense. <laughs> so, the, and the endocrine system is the other one that's kind of tricky for a lot of people. There's a lot of things happening there. Yeah. Brenda knows because she's doing the presentation for that one. Um, so nervous system, without your nervous system, you pretty much can't do anything. Um, it's, it's what is controlling and coordinating everything that's happening in your body. So um, our muscles need nerves to work, all of our senses, all of our organs. Um, so when we talk about like our cells communicating with one another, the nervous system is one of the primary ways, and the other way is our endocrine system. So nervous system and endocrine system are the two ways our body cells communicate with one another. Um, so the two main divisions, and we'll talk more a little bit about that, but central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. So essentially central is your brain and your spinal cord, peripheral is everything else. So all of the nerves that go down to your fingertips and your toes and um, like your tongue, all of that would be considered peripheral. And everything outside of your brain and spinal cord, we'll talk more about that anyway. So we'll start at the cell level. So basic, or the basic cell for the nervous system is the neuron. So back when we did the cell, the first unit, when we were talking about cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs, organs make up organ systems. One of the pictures we looked at was a nerve cell and how it had all those little branches coming out that reach out to the tissues around it. Um, and then neuroglia, so that's pretty much the only time I'll say that word, but those are not really neurons, but they're the cells that support the neurons. So there, there's all kinds of different sorts of neuroglia that do different things, but um, they some of them bring nutrients, some of them help add to the structure of the neuron, so they're just support cells. So think of them as that. And then neurons are the guys that do most of the work in the nervous system. And that's what transmits the, the energy or the electrical impulses, the information it picks up. So the neurons transmit that to where it needs to go. So neuron structure, so here's, these are the pieces of the neuron, and there's a picture here, and I'll draw one for you. So um, the basics of what I want you to remember is a cell body, so that's just this guy here, and inside is the nucleus, so the nucleus is where like the DNA and everything will be housed in there, it's kind of that center piece of every cell. All of these outreaching guys here are dendrites. So those guys are like, they pick up the messages. So they're the messengers that are looking for thing, information to pick up. And then this is the axon. So down here is your long, um, so it, this is different lengths and different neurons, but your signal is sent down this axon. So it's picked up here in the dendrite. The signal sent down the axon. And then at the end, your book may call them axon terminals, but the other term is synaptic terminals. So I'll go over all this again. You don't have to know about each of those last two things. But, um, so that's the basics. And so most of the wiring in your house is not just bare wiring, right? What's over top of it? Covering. Covering. So what's the purpose of that? protect you so it keeps that electrical signal where it's supposed to be right so this is myelin sheath so this not all act not all neurons have this but it's kind of like this insulating piece over top of the axon here and neurons that have that the signals will travel faster because it's losing less energy and there's more to that but that's all you need to know really so just the myelin sheath is kind of your insulating, insulating factor on an a on a neuron. Synaptic terminals. 
Okay, so once the um, signal is passed through the axon, this is kind of like where it's passed on to the next cell. So it would come here to these terminals at the end, and meeting up with these terminals would be maybe another nerve cell, or a muscle cell, or a gland in your body. So somewhere, some cell that that signal has to go to. So if it were another nerve cell, it would be more these dendrites. So if this was passing on to another nerve cell over here, there would be dendrites, and just like this, those dendrites would pick up the signal from those um, terminals at the end there. Um, so those pick up signals, so it could be another nerve that it's picking up the signal from, and so we'll talk more about this, there's three different kinds of neurons, but it's picking up some kind of signal. So whether it's me touching my face, there's nerve dendrites in there that are picking up that I'm touching it, and then that nerve cell is sending it to probably another nerve cell, to another nerve cell, and eventually it would get to my brain, and my brain's like, oh yeah, I'm touching my face. <laughs> So it could be other nerve cells, or it could be picking up um, information from uh, sensors, so those receptors. So it, when we talked about skin, we talked about touch receptors and heat receptors and that kind of thing. So, so those supporting cells, are they like genes? So that's, yeah, your myelin sheath is what it's talking about there. Yeah, myelin sheath, that's what these are. Yeah. So sometimes it's helpful to draw a picture and then we can talk about it while I draw it. So that might might help. Rather than just looking at a picture. Let's see if this wants to work for me. Okay, so neuron is the basic cell of the nervous system, and so he will have all of these dendrites. So dendrites are kind of like the, the messengers that pick up information. up information. Hello, Nancy. So all of those guys are going to pick up information from around your body. So that could be information from your five senses, so like sight, smell, touch. It could be just the signal coming from another nerve cell, but that's going to pick up your information. So this is your cell body, so that's the main part where you're going to find all of the cell structures there. Body cell body. You wrote body body. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> cell body. That's right, it's all recorded. You can go back and watch that if you want. <laughs> Maybe you'll remember body body now and don't mess it up. <laughs> so, yeah. So in inside is a nucleus, so all cells will have that. Most cells, not all cells. Nucleus, so that's the the way you. So that's inside the cell body. Okay. So all of so some all the signals are being picked up here and sent down this way down the axon. Yes. Yes. And then it's going to be sent down the axon. So here's your here's your electrical signal going down. No problem. Okay, so that's your electrical signal going down here. Okay, now 
some neurons, not all, but some, also have this insulation over them. It's called the myelin sheath. And it helps, it helps the signals to move faster. So if you have a spider crawling on your leg, it's pretty quick that you're able to do this or swat it off or scream and run and swear or whatever, right? So it's very fast. That's a very fast signal that's happening there. And that's part of the reason why it can be so fast is that it has that insulation over top of that nerve cell. Yes. So this whole structure here is the axon. So that's the whoops, axon. So this long structure here where it's passed down along between the cell body and then we'll get to the terminals at the end, that's the axon. Any questions so far? We're traveling down the neuron. And then when you get to the end of the axon, you're going to have more long projections. And so these are synaptic or axon terminals. So if you see axon terminals written somewhere, that's what it's called. So there are different kinds of neurons that might look a little different from this. Some of them might have two axons, some of them might have really, really short axons. But if we're talking about just a basic label, this basic neuron, what does a basic neuron look like? This is what it, what it includes. So this is um, where signal is delivered these terminals at the end here. The signal is delivered. So one way to think about it is these guys are kind of like the listeners. They're listening for the signals to happen, whatever it is, whether it's a smell or a touch or, or some kind of signal saying your heart rate's beating too fast or whatever it is, they're listening. And these guys are like the talkers. So if you think about if you're in a line and you do that whispering game where you whisper to the next person, these guys are picking up the information and these guys are sending it, sending it off to the next cell. Okay, any questions about that so far? No? So they can be super tiny. They can be like very, very small microscopic or a neuron. Um, there's one that runs like the whole length of our leg. So it goes from like our spine all the way down to the bottom of our foot. So it can be really long too. So that's like a meter in length. So that one would have a really long axon. So this slide, if you're using it to study, just kind of gives that basic overview of what each one is. So nucleus, a lot of that's where a lot of the power, or not the powerhouse, but DNA, every cell needs that to help keep it alive, right? The dendrite's picking up the information. Um, the axon is the long fiber that transmits it away from the cell body down to these terminals, so synaptic or axon terminals, so it goes down there. Um, and then the myelin sheath is that protective coating that insulates. So that gives you your, your basic kind of definitions of each of those parts.
Technology is fine when it works, eh? Your diagram. So the synapse. So, so when you get to the end of those terminals, there's a tiny space that's going to exist there before it connects to the next cell. So this is an example of one nerve cell um, sending information to another nerve cell. And so there's the, this one would be picking up information, sending it along the axon to the next nerve cell. And in between these axon terminals and these dendrites, there's a tiny space there, and that's called the synapse. And the signal has to travel across that little space to get to the next cell. So just knowing that that's called the synapse and it has to travel across there. So can be electrical, so a signal can pass through like can be electrical, so that's pretty fast. Some of them send little chemical signals across that gap too, so that's a little bit slower, but we're not going to go into too much detail. So it's a little space. The space is between the the terminals, so the like the synaptic terminals or the axon terminals and the dendrites. So there's a tiny space between there, and it's the synapse. Just the, and the signal has to cross over that. So that's where, yeah, so there's a lot of, if you've ever heard of neurotransmitters, so there's a lot of illnesses, um, a lot of mental health things they attribute to these, this tiny synapse. So not having enough of the chemicals that are needed to cross that can cause things like depression. So this is where um, some of those problems come up. Or things like Parkinson's disease. So part of Parkinson's disease is one of those transmitters that transmit across that gap get depleted or, or too much of it sometimes so that things are firing when they shouldn't be. So a lot of illnesses, if, you've, if they, you hear them being talked about, having to do with neurotransmitters, that's what, ha that's what a neurotransmitter is. It's something that helps these signals pass across that synapse. Okay. And there, there are more and more research is showing that most mental health or a lot of mental health illnesses have to do with that synapse and those chemicals that help um, nerves fire across it. So that's basically what a neurotransmitter is. It's that chemical that neurons use to communicate across that gap. So across that synapse, they have to be able to pass that signal across there, and neurotransmitters help them do that. So you can imagine if you can't, if one nerve tries to pass the signal to the next and that it can't get there, what kind of problems that would create. So in something like Parkinson's disease, where you see a lot of like muscle tremors and you know some lose the ability to speak and that kind of thing. And it can affect the entire body. So types of neurons. So there are three types of neurons we'll worry about. So we have sensory neurons, motor neurons, and interneurons. So 
you can kind of think of these happening in a loop a little bit. And so we'll do a little, we'll take a walk in the forest, but not a real forest, unfortunately, because it is going to be nicer today. Um, but so sensory neurons are the ones that are picking up senses, picking up things from our external environment or our environment. It could be our internal environment, honestly. But it's picking up information. So if we are smelling something, our sensory neurons are picking up that we're smelling it or what we're smelling and taking that signal to our brains. Or they might go through, it does go through our brains, but some of them might go through our spinal cord. Um, so once it gets into our central nervous system, then you have interneurons. So sensory neurons are picking up that information, bringing it to our central nervous system. Once it's inside there, we have interneurons. So those are making connections within our central nervous system. So if I step on a nail and I feel pain in my foot, that's a sensory neuron picking up that pain. It's sending it up into my spinal cord. In, once it's in the spinal cord, it's making connections up to my brain. Those are interneurons now. My brain is kind of making sense of it. And then what happens after your brain is like, oh, I just stepped on a nail. You're gonna, you could swear, you could scream, and what else would you do? Yes, you would retract your foot really fast. So that's the third part of it is your motor neuron. So your motor neurons are conducting the information away from your central nervous system to make something in your body react to what happened. So we will talk. So Okay, this is just a diagram. I'll show you this diagram first. So this gives a stimulus of having a mosquito landing on your arm and, and biting you. So that's a stimulus. So that would be like a light touch. Might, maybe it's like a, a pinch or a little pain. Um, usually you can feel their legs on your skin, like that kind of light touch. So that's your stimulus. Then your sensory neuron would be picking up that light touch and bringing it to your brain, so bringing it to your central nervous system. So once it's in your central nervous system, that's where the interneurons are that are just making the connections inside your brain and your spinal cord. So once your brain is integrating, is that's the word that they use, what is your brain probably making sense of that? What is it probably thinking? Hmm? Something's on me. Um, maybe. Yeah, it's, it could be something that's bite, that's going to bite me. Right, and so and, and it's making sense of that, okay, I need to swat that off because it's biting me. So then your motor neuron <laughs> causes you to swat it off or to swat the spot where the mosquito was. So this is also showing the difference. So central nervous system is happening here, your brain and spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system, remember those two major divisions is all over here. So picking up the sensation and the motor output is all outside of your central nervous system, peripheral nervous system. Okay. Input output, that is very true. Okay. So we'll take walk here. So we're going to kind of, this will help solidify in our brains maybe, um, the whole sensory integration and motor piece of our nervous system. Okay, so we're going to go for a walk in the forest. So sensory wise, what is it telling us? So what, what are your senses telling you probably? So your eyes are saying it's dark and foggy. It might be chilly, yes, you might feel that it's chilly. <laughs> Somebody felt scared, but what did, What about your senses told you it was scary? You heard a bird, you heard one. Right? It looks like a crow, maybe. Or something. It's closed in, because it's closed in, so you might feel. You can smell the wood. Me too. Mm -hmm. Feel the moisture. 
So what is our brain? So our, so our sensory neurons are going to pick that up and take it to our brain. What is our brain going to tell us about that? Some people already said scared, that you shouldn't go in there. It looks a little less ominous on my computer screen, if that helps. <laughs> it's a little brighter there. What did you say, Mary? Walk with caution. So you're going to be a little cautious, but you're still, still going to go for a walk. Yes. So you might think, oh, this looks nice. This looks nice. Um, let's go. So then your brain integrated it, used its interneurons, and then what is it going to do about it? So some people might walk, so they might physically use the. Some people might be stopping and running the other way. Yeah. Okay. So you might be pausing and doing this to get more sensory information, right? Okay. Are you? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So you decide to go in and you sit down for a minute to listen to your favorite song. So what sensations are you getting now? So what act are you actually sensing? So using your sensory neurons, the warmth of the sun, you can feel the warm, yes. You can feel your butt on the grass. Maybe it's a little bit wet. <laughs> so maybe you have a bug on you. So those are your sensory neurons. You can feel the light breeze. You can hear the music. Yeah, you can hear the music. So what your brain, what does it make sense of that? What is your brain, once you get to your interneurons and your central nervous system, what is it integrating? It's thinking, oh, this is nice. Yes, it could be like, oh, there was a lot of dew in that grass. I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> she does. Okay, yes, you're feeling the vibration. <laughs> yes. And so your, your brain integrated all of that. Now it's going to send out motor neuron signals. So what is your motor neuron going to do? Get up because your butt's wet. Relax. Maybe you're even going to lay down. Turn the music up. Dance. I was going to say, does, doesn't anybody dance? Singing, yes. Good. Yeah. And in long term care, they use music as a sensory stimulation. And you can see some of that motor output still. They'll sing along. Like people can sing along that m can't even speak anymore sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. Um, Cedarstone has like an iPod program that they use too. So the song's over, you put your iPod away. It's a beautiful day and you want to be barefoot. So sensory input, what are your Talk sensory neuro neurons? Your socks got wet. I think now your bare feet. The cool stone pressure, maybe a little sharp. Wet. It could be wet. Their feet are really dirty. <laughs> Grounding feeling. So, Tammy, you bring up a lot of like. Yes, but I'm trying to think like what sensation is that? That's like your sixth sense, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah. So it could be more like you're feeling that, and then your brain is integrating that, that it feels calming, like, yeah. oh, that's calming. But some people do think like feel like there's energy as a different sense, that you can sense oh, yeah. energy, so that would be, that's what I'm thinking. yeah. Has anyone heard of Reiki? 
One of my best friends is a Reiki master, so that's yeah. like an energy healing. Yeah. And she literally goes outside and hugs a tree when she needs to be grounded. <laughs> that's what she does. She literally will go outside and hug the tree. Yeah. And that grounds her. Yeah. So you're... That's right. <laughs> Maybe we need to hug more trees. Um, so you're feeling the stones. Your brain is integrating that into... What is your brain making sense of it? The kids. Tammy feels more grounded, like she feels more calm and relaxed. Fun. Yeah, it might be like, oh crap, that hurts. Yeah. You can feel gravity. Yes. So you feel that kind of constant pressure, your posture. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, you're hearing something? What are you hearing now? More birds. Birds. Now do people not like birds? My husband hates birds. No, <laughs> my husband too. <laughs> a rabbit, yes. Mm -hmm. And motor output, so taking all of that, what your brain made sense, what motor? Let's beat faster. If it hurts, you're like, oh, oh. Like, yeah, maybe you're putting your shoes back on. So your birds, so we already did that. So that's your sensation of your hearing. Your brain makes sense. Some people might be like, oh, don't come near me. Some people might be a little bit afraid. Some people might stop and watch and think it's I'm lovely. Sure. I, I, I'm talking like, like that way. Like, 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 yeah. And so motor output, some people might be going faster to get away from the bird. Some people might their bodies might stop and whistle back at them, like you said. Yep. So huge bushes of wild roses. Smell. 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 So that's your sensory input. Your sensory neurons are taking that to your brain. You can hear the bees. Soft touch. Yes. You guys are very good at sensation. <laughs> Yes, so that's your brain making sense of it. So my brain, if I hear, I love wild roses, but if I hear wild roses full of bees, I'm going to go away slowly because I don't want to use my epipen, right? Yes, <laughs> coping skills. Right, and so your brain makes sense of that in different ways. So some people don't like bees, so they might like, oh, I better get away from this bush. Some people reach in further to touch it, like you said, so that gives more sensory. So sensory neurons into your central nervous system, which is interneurons. It does. Like yellow roses, like my mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? So like we see the hand on the tree. Yeah, so that's a, something else in the nerve. Some we associate that's all to do with our brain and our nervous system. So we store memories. So some people, if you smell lemons, what would you associate it with? Um, cleaner. Food cleaner. That's interesting. For me, it's like lemon pie and like my grandmother made lemon meringue pies all the time like so for me that's it so that's funny it cleaner pine salt has a similar my mom always used pine salt so that always reminds me of my mom <laughs> yeah so um so we've got that one so the sky's beginning to darken overhead as clouds gather so sensation wise what are sensory neurons picking up so chill it's colder you're, if you're making sense of that, you might go and take cover somewhere. Mm -hmm. The air is cooling off. Like yes, mm -hmm. yes, Some people like it. Does anyone not like thunder and lightning? Everybody likes it? Yeah. Dendrites? Yeah. <laughs> and, and you pick up the electrical magnetic mm -hmm. You should take Reiki. <laughs> you, you have? Cool. Yes. Awesome. My friend makes lots of money doing that stuff. You can get into that. <laughs> okay, so motor, so your, your brain is making sense of it. So some of you are like, oh, I should take cover. Some of you are like excited, oh, I hope there's thunder. And then our motor might say walk it physically walk us into wood. something yeah maybe i better not be under these huge trees anymore or listening to my ipod in a field you know. so up ahead is a bridge you need to cross oh my God, look at 
so sensation, so your shaking. sensory shaking, like, I don't know. especially if you reach out and feel the bridge and it, maybe the wind is moving it a little bit, so that's going to be feeling the moisture of the fog on your skin and your brain is integrating. What is your brain integrating? Well, also a sense of I can do this. Maybe. You know what yeah. I mean? Like so I your brain is integrating, I can do it. Yes. Yeah. It looks pretty flimsy. It does look pretty flimsy. I think there's even... <laughs> so that's your motor output. Yeah, you go first. You go You're first pushing first. something. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Feel the rope. What would the rope feel like? The texture? Raw. Yeah, so that's your sensory. Yeah, so that's your motor, your motor output. So you integrate that you're scared and your motor output is to grab on tighter, right? Some people freeze up. Yeah. Yeah, if you, you get to about here and can't move. Mm-hmm. It's foggy. And there's about to be a thunderstorm. You can probably feel every wind that really goes by. Yes. Lots of sensory input on a swing bridge, eh? On the other side of the bridge, it's really cold. And there's snow. Your hair's raised. Your hair's raised. So you feel the cold. Wet. You feel wet. Your mo your integrate, oh, it's snowing now. That's really weird. Um, I'm going to put my shoes back on. Yes. Yeah, so you fit motor neurons, put your shoes back on. That's a good idea. <laughs> so your motor output would be to keep warm. It's very weird. <laughs> Hear the wind. Exactly. So that's your brain integrating like, where did I just walk into? I went across this weird swinging bridge. So you're a bit confused. <laughs> So does that? So Nancy's not going to turn around and go back across the bridge. I don't think Stephanie even entered the woods, so she's fine. <laughs> but some of you are going to keep walking because you don't want to go back across that bridge, right? But you put your shoes on, your motor neurons put your shoes back on. Right. You're by yourself. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so in a small clearing, there's a cabin. You can smell the old wood. Yes. Yep, smell the old wood. Kind of that rotted leaves smell, maybe, right? But at first, I think I'd be like, oh my gosh, I can't take it. Because it's transferred to the brain. So you're so your, your interneurons in your central nervous system are making sense of this. So some of you are, is your brain going to decide to go in? <laughs> Stephanie's answering for everybody. Nobody's going in the cabin. <laughs> it might be your only choice, eh? So your motor neurons might take you in. At the same time... Curiosity. <laughs> so we didn't take Stephanie's advice and we went in. So the rain is starting, so you went inside. So again, you can probably smell. What do you smell? The rain. Mm -hmm. The damp. The dirt floor. <laughs> We like grew up in the same area. All the stuff she's talking about, I'm like, 
She grew up in the woods like me, you know. <laughs> My parents are still in the woods. <laughs> it feels damp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your motor neurons might try to light the wood stove. And your brain is wondering, is there raccoon coming? Yeah. And so someone said hungry, you're, you might be feeling internal, your sensory neurons are feeling that you're hungry now, right? You can pick up. Do you like to pick up energy? That's what I would be like all day. So there's a pile of rotten garbage in the corner. So sensory neurons are picking up what? Stink, the smell. Yeah. There's definitely rat trap there somewhere. <laughs> Where's the rest of it? That's what, so this is all, what all your brains are integrating. Well, this is juice. I don't think you're, juice bottles. This, yeah, maybe. Maybe they're helping that. Okay. So your brain is making sense of this, like. <laughs> and your motor neurons would. Yeah, you'd probably stay a little away from it, maybe. Some people might dig in it looking for something. Mm -hmm. There are a million spider webs above you, and you have a small tickle on your neck. So your sensory neurons feel the tickle, right? And your brain is thinking what? Get it off. Get it off. So your motor neurons are going to put your hoodie up. And someone, I'm sure you're probably going to go like this. <laughs> Some people might holler and yell. Mm -hmm. There's definitely neck. Looks better on my screen. <laughs> Okay, we're getting to the end. Outside of the window, Tammy was looking forward to this. So our sensei, our senses are just detecting what? So our sensory neurons. So excitement is going to be like where that's what we're making sense of it. So. Thunders after lightning because lightning goes faster and you see that and then you can count and you can hear and then you hear the lightning that went because sound is slower than light. So hearing it, so that's one of your senses is going to pick up the sound, the sight. Mm -hmm. You might hear trees cracking. So my brain is probably going to integrate that. Like, I do like thunder and lightning, but if I'm in that little rotten cabin with the garbage and the raccoon, I'm, like, a little bit scared, right? <laughs> but my motor neurons are probably going to stay inside at the least, probably, right? Yeah. And you also notice a small shed outside. Oh, my God. Now, then I start to Back to where Stephanie stayed. So your sense. Okay. <laughs> so your senses, your senses are telling you you're seeing this, right? So that's one of your senses. You're seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. So your brain is thinking, is that real or not? <laughs> okay. 
so Mary's a survivor. All of her things are going towards what will help me survive, and that that's how her brain is integrating it. Green. So you get scared, and so that's your motor output would be that you would yell. I think mine would be like, don't make any noise and don't move. Yeah, yes. And then good thing your alarm goes off. Ah. So it was all a, a dream, right? Yeah, that's sad. But there's still sensory input here. So now what's you your... Out, is it real or is it yeah. Are you still asleep? Yeah, maybe this wake yeah. alarm is part of your dream. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's... So this is the last one. So what's the sensory input happening here when your alarm goes off in the morning? You can hear it. You can touch. You can touch it. Yes. Yes. And then what does your brain say when it hears it? Time to get up. Shut it off. So you think I got to shut that off? <laughs> Not that dream. <laughs> Yeah, I would never. Yeah. I wouldn't want to go back to the clown. And then. <laughs> yeah, so and then your motor output might be to jump up fast. Or reset it. Or some go back to sleep. Yeah. My snooze button's broken, so sometimes I go back to sleep. It's probably a good thing it's broken. So I try to get up. All right, so that's... Yes. 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 So that's all the senses, but some people's brain might interpret that as being, this is hell, I want to be like at home in my apartment and not do that to you, right? My You guys want to have a little break?